Okay, uh, my name is Richard Lee, and today I would like to share with you our latest research and development on VR Air. Now, now first, let's take a look. Your digital at, world is blended with your video. real world. Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? I just put the images in one drive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and go beyond the screen. Where your digital world is blended with your real world. Okay, so we have captured a few keywords. This is totally, totally brand new. New way to live, new way to work, to design, to teach, to share. And most importantly, everything goes beyond your screen. So in our work, we started from a few use cases, and then we analyze, uh, we, and then we analyze those technical gaps and identify some requirements. Finally, we came up with some, a few key technologies for networking in support of VR AR. So pretty much I'm going to talk about the network side instead of the end devices and the content. So we, c we have considered three use cases, video, gaming, and shopping. So for video, quite a few companies have been working on it. For example, Intel, Facebook, YouTube. And the difference between VR video uh, and the traditional video is that you can watch the video from different viewing points. Normally, what we watch is something the video provider provides. Actually, here it's different. We can change the angle, change your viewing position. And so that's the most important one. But right now, because of the network is still short of bandwidth and some like uh, complexing, including technologies. It's bit, bit red, it's still small. Currently, it's in the order of 25 megabit per second. So our next use case is gaming. So this is probably the most popular one. And Goodman Sachs said that, so this will be likely become the first mass consumption market. It estimates that in year 2025, the total market would be $11.5 billion with about 200 million end users. This gaming is different from the normal gaming currently on our screen. As I said earlier, VR will go beyond your screen. So in this case, you actually can interact with objects and other players. For example, you can do the real you know, wrestle or even kickboxing. You can do the real one, so two players can do that. And uh, this is not just only about the user experience. Uh, it's going far beyond that. It needs some advanced technology in both and also networking side. Our third uh, use case is about shopping. And so someone, I think the previous one, only mentioned a startup, Magic Leap. It has raised 1.4 billion US dollars from investors. It's huge. Alibaba is a Chinese vendor and retail vendor has implemented something called uh, Buy Plus. So in this shopping, it's different. You can actually experience that. If you like a pair of shoes, try it. Try it on. If you like a shoot, try it. So, so it needs some more advanced technologies. But currently, right now, it's still in the early stage. Why? Because some technologies is still far behind, like a naked 
AI, 3D technology. You have to wear something. If you have wear something, and uh, it's not real. So, so you want to feel real. If you want to go there, so this is something like a uh, use case like uh, shopping. I and I think it's going to have a big future, but it's not in the next three years. It may go beyond in the next three to five years, but it's definitely the way to go. All, all of us knew that because I, I was a student at the university at uh, where Amazon started, right? So for the book, you don't have experience. When you buy a book, you pretty much know that what's inside the book. But right now, you can buy a lot of things, clothes, even uh, even your like cars, right? People right now buy the houses. If they buy houses, usually you see some interesting photos, make a phone call, so some agent bring you to the houses, you go there to have a look. It's going to be a waste of time of yours and the agents. The success rate is less than 1%. The agent should 100 customers, only one customer actually buy it. But with we are shopping. It's not going to be like that. You can enter it, see the house. And uh, where is the bedroom? Where is the washroom? You can you can feel it. And so this is something we have uh, started in our like past few months. Yes. So with new experience and uh, the network build up with uh, improved bandwidth, some more and more applications will come up. And something we are looking at as the remote healthcare, telesurgery, remote education. And all of them will come up one after another. And so all these are cool. Like we are gaming, we are shopping, we love it, we like it. But what does that mean for network? What is its application for the network? What should we do about it? I'm a network designer and a builder. I design network, I define uh, architecture. What should I do in order to support the network? Currently, in all the, the, this VR, you can only experience that in the same room. You cannot experience that with something happen on the remote side. So although we have many use cases, all of them can be translated into two network metrics, throughput and latency. Throughput must be high and latency must be low. But how high is high and how low is low? Hmm? So why high and so how high is high? So right now we are still staying in the like first stage. So if we experience, if we will want to have a compare our experience with the TV is pretty much like 240 pixel TV. So your experience is not that great. But if you want to have some experience that's equivalent to that of high definition TV, you would need 400 megabit per second. Just pick up your iPhone, can you get it? No, no one can get so high bandwidth. So this needs huge build up, so people are looking at you 2020, why? Because 5G promise you and one gigabit per second. So we, right now, we even go something beyond that, that's a 4K TV. If you have a simple 2D VR video live streaming, you wouldn't need one gigabit per second. But if you want to have something called a panorama, like video, you would have four times bigger than this. If you consider some boost, it will be prob probably like reach five gigabit per second, right? So the network is an issue. How can you support so much bandwidth? How can you use them? So this is something like network provider should work on. So let's take a look about latency. Why latency should be important? Why does it matter here? And according to the MIT research, the motion to photon time is 20 milliseconds. 20 milliseconds includes everything from action capture, including framing and streaming, and transport, decoding, and finally displaying. So 
totally is 20 milliseconds. But if we do a reasonable time budget, we only have about five to seven milliseconds for network transport. Remember, the light transmits uh, one millisecond is roughly equivalent to 300 kilometers. But uh, you still have some queuing delay. You have some intermediate devices in it. So that real the distance, one millisecond, is something between 50 kilometers to 150 kilometers. Just uh, suppose we have five milliseconds and budget for network transport. So this network is probably less than 300 kilometers in radius, in radius. So this would mean that we need some new technology. That's why people are working on something called MEC, mobile edge computing, fog computing, or even something missed computing. Your handset needs also to calculate that. So this afternoon, I'm going to talk about that. So uh, the, for the networking, it's just not only transmit your data. It has something else. I said earlier, when we watch a video, we can change our viewing position. How can you do those? So latency is important. It's low. It can be as low as five milliseconds. OK, so on, uh, this afternoon, we are going to have another talk. It's about uh, just for network. So how can we you know, support such VR, AR applications in network? Moreover, we also have a demo and uh, close to the entrance. I highly encourage you to go there to take a look, to tell us what you think. Tell us what do, we, what do you expect. And, uh, I hope we can find some partners to work together. Also, I am myself on the network side. We also have my colleagues on the other side. So that's it. Thank you.